Hello and welcome to the first episode of the Automated Home Podcast. I am going to be uploading this as a video onto YouTube, but I thought I'll take the opportunity to address a couple of things here today and might as well get the first podcast episode in the can and uploaded. And actually on that note, I think before we can get the podcast listed on some of the popular podcast directories, we do need to publish and upload at least one episode of the podcast. So might as well get that one done today so I can hopefully get the podcast listed on a few of the popular directories pretty soon. But in terms of what we're going to be talking about today, I want to reply to Full Bore, who made a forum post. And I know the forum, that's been the bane of my existence for months. And I know everybody is frustrated. So I'm going to talk about that. And yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on with regard to plans for the podcast and the website and the forums, and uh, maybe share a funny story at the end, but I'll leave that for the very end in case you're not interested. I won't bore you with that in the meantime. All right. So firstly, full bore and everybody else. Uh, My apologies. I I don't know what to say. I saw your forum post here and I initially thought, okay, let let me, let me, obviously I can't reply. So I thought, okay, let me create another post here and explain the situation. But as you can see on the forum, I've made several updates in the last month or so. And I didn't think, like, I'm sick of doing that. Like, no one can reply to those posts anyway. So I thought, all right, I'm going to make you a video reply and I can just explain things a little bit better. So you're right to be frustrated. And I am also very frustrated with the situation. It's been going on for months. Um, where we're at at the moment, let me show you what have we got here. So yeah, I saw the the post here. And so I, first of all, I, I paid, vBulletin is the software that powers the forum. And I think generally speaking, the software is good. At least that's my understanding. But support seems to be lacking in some ways. Maybe their expertise is awesome, but just the frequency of replies, the fact that uh, there seems to be a, a time, a significant time zone difference from where I am, um, which is, of course is not their fault. Um, but they also don't seem to have support on the weekend. So all that combined means that at, at the moment, I'm, I seem to be getting one or you know, a couple of exchanges per week back and forth with the vBulletin support team. And progress is slow. And it seems like every step of the way They want to confirm something or double check something. And the same was true when I was trying to transfer the ownership of the vBulletin account from Mark, the previous owner, Um, any OGs that have been around and followed Automated Home for, um, you know, years, decades, even, you'll know Mark. And that was, it was also quite a painful process trying to transfer the vBulletin account from Mark's name into my name. They wanted to double check everything, every step of the way. And then with the time zone differences and taking a couple of days to reply and not working weekends, it just took a really, really long time. And look, as you can see here, this is my, I've logged in. Uh, You can see, so I paid to upgrade um, the software that was, I guess, about three weeks ago. And so, yeah, we downloaded the upgraded version of the software, which I hoped might fix the, the broken replies function. And I gave it to my developer because I'm not a developer. You know, I have a basic understanding of how websites work, but I couldn't write a line of code to save my life. So I've got a developer to help me with this. I gave him the downloaded version of the new V6 software. And at that time, I also realized, and I noticed it had this with the notes associated with that order, that in order for V6 or vBulletin software to work, you need to be running PHP version 8 or, or 8.1, 8.2, 8.3. And I think the website is running PHP version 7.4, if I'm not mistaken, but it was definitely not version 8, which means that it's not going to be compatible with this vBulletin latest version of software. So that was a curveball as well. I mentioned that to my developer and he said, all right, well, look, we can create a staging environment or a test environment of the website, basically clone the website onto a website environment that nobody will see, nobody will have access to, and we can test things there. 
And that's what we've been doing. At the same time, I also contacted V Bulletin support and I explained to them that's what we were, that's what our plan was. But I asked them and said, hey, until we figure out how to safely upgrade to V6 of your software, can you please also work with me concurrently to try to just fix the current old version, which I think was V4. And that's just been really, really slow progress. And then, you know, like I said, we, we maybe get a couple of email exchanges back and forth in per week. And one that was particularly frustrating for me was, uh, you know, the start of this week that's just finished. It's now Sunday lunchtime. I'm recording this, but I think it was Monday or perhaps it was Tuesday. You know, so maybe it was like Monday U.S. time. Uh, I assume they're in the United States. I could be wrong about that, but they're definitely not on the same time zone as I am here in Asia. I think it was probably Tuesday morning my time. I got an email from V Bulletin Support, and they basically said, "Oh, we checked your staging, your test environments, and it looks like everything's working fine." And the problem with that is, we gave them context. We gave them the information. We said, "Hey." Um, we're able to install the software, but it has to be a fresh install, which means that we lose all of the threads, all of the conversations, all of the history forever. And obviously that's bad. We don't want a fresh install. We want to preserve all of the history of the forums. So it was frustrating to me because I had to wait three or four days to get that reply because it was the weekend. And then, and then when I finally got the reply, they didn't really seem to have taken the time to read the context of my previous email, which explained the situation. So look, the most recent email I sent them was a few days ago. And you can see it right here on the screen. Um, this is all getting a little bit technical for me. I'm at the point now where I'm just conveying information between my developer who's trying to upgrade to v6 um, now i believe he's working directly on the live website the live environment which is risky but we are taking daily backups so in case something breaks we'll be able to roll back to the previous saved version uh, at least that's that's what i hope um, we can do that pretty sure and whenever i get a reply from v bulletin which is not very often um Again, recording this on a Sunday. I haven't heard from them for a couple of days. That's the weekend. I'm not expecting to hear from them until Tuesday morning, my time, because, yeah, I don't know. That's what, that's what seems to happen. And anyway, whenever I get a reply from the VBulletin team, I just send it straight across to, to my developer. And then when he gives me some response, I send it back to them. And it's all getting a little bit technical. But I hope we can get this resolved very quickly. It's super frustrating. And I know it's super frustrating for everybody who wants to use the forum. So that's the best update I have. I know that's not a fantastic update, but we are actively working on it. And I can tell you anytime I get any update or reply from the vBulletin support team, I'm immediately sending that information to my developer. So there's no time wasted. And in fact, I think last week I got a reply from them about 11 o'clock in the evening, my time, I was really tired. I probably should have been in bed already. But I knew that I needed to immediately get that information over to my developer at that exact moment, because if I didn't do it then, and if I waited until the next day, well, then we're going to lose a full 24 hours before I could get that reply back to vBulletin again. So that's kind of the update with the forum. I'm really, really sorry about that. I was originally thinking that I was just going to take things step by step, fix the forum functionality first. This was my idea. Didn't realize it would take so long. And then get started with maybe the first podcast and then, you know, a few other changes over time and maybe get started with some um, publishing some new content in various formats as well. But that's taking way too much time. So here we are today. I thought, you know, I might just give full bore, give you a, a video response here explaining the situation completely. Hopefully, hopefully that um, response on, I, look, I understand that it's frustrating, but hopefully that makes sense. Um, it's transparent enough as to what's happening. I'm going to stop giving guidance on how long this is going to take to be resolved because I don't know this, how, how has it taken? What, what is it like already three months or something? If you had have asked me three months ago, how long would this take? I would have said probably a couple of weeks, right? And here we are three months later. So I don't know, but like ASAP, as soon as I can get it fixed, um, and we're doing our best here. So sorry about that. So, all right, let me, let me move on here a little bit. 
and talk about the podcast. So I'm going to be uploading this video onto the YouTube channel, but I'm also going to take the audio and upload that as the first podcast episode. So if you are a podcast listener, you'll be able to find us, um, if not exactly when I upload this, hopefully in the next week or two, I'll be able to get uh, the automated home podcast channel and the episodes listed on the popular podcast directory. So wherever you get your podcasts, if you take a look, if you search, you'll probably be able to find us on there fairly soon. So um, if you're a podcast listener, jump on, feel free to subscribe. Personally speaking, I'm a, I'm a huge podcast listener. I love podcasts. I probably listen to an average of one hour of podcasts per day. I love the format, so I'm going to give it a try. And in terms of the plan for the podcast, I work pretty closely with um, a couple of pretty well-known people in the smart home space and, you know, might try and get them on at some point. Uh, additionally, have a few contacts, few industry, oh, actually quite a lot of industry contacts. So I haven't reached out to any of those people just yet. Again, I was kind of thinking, hey, just fix one thing at a time here, take baby steps. Um, but at some point in the next weeks or months, I'm going to start reaching out to some of these industry contacts and we'll see if we can get some of those people on to have a chat. And when we record those conversations, it will be uploaded as a video onto the YouTube channel and it will be also available as an audio only podcast episode. So you can find that on your favorite podcast uh, directories. Just going to have a drink of water here. Speaking of the podcast and potential ideas, if you have any connections that you think might be interesting guests for me to speak to, for me to have on for a conversation, feel free to reach out and, um, you know, I'll consider um, that person as a potential guest. And, you know, if it makes sense, I'd love to have them on. So um, I'm probably going to be looking to have some long form conversations that are fairly unstructured just see where the conversation goes. And that's kind of the way um, I think we'll, we'll do things, at least initially for the podcast. Moving forward beyond that, there are a couple of different ideas that I have for what we could do with the podcast. But, you know, I, I don't want to um, give anything away just yet in case I don't follow through with any of those ideas. But for now, what I can say is if you, or perhaps um, if, if you know someone or maybe you yourself, would like to come on and have a chat about something related to smart homes, um, by all means, reach out. Let's have a conversation. All right, so let's talk about what's going to be happening a little bit longer term with the website. So obviously, amazing brand, amazing forums, website, everything that Mark built over the last 27 years, I guess going on 28 years now, is amazing, but I am going to be eventually moving the website and probably not soon. This is probably going to be like a three to six month project, but eventually the website will be moving just to let you know, if you're listening to this, or if you're watching this on YouTube, we'll be moving from automatedhome.co.uk to automatedhome.com. Again, I don't know exactly when that's going to happen, but that is in the plan. and. First things first, let's just get the forums working properly again. And then we can think about maybe, you know, when and how to do that migration, because it is a big task. There's no risk to the forums breaking or the website breaking. Um, if we do things properly, which, you know, uh, I have some people that we can work with for that migration. But just to let you know that eventually the website address will be changing from .co.uk to .com. So that's in the plan as well. So that's pretty much it in terms of updates. Again, the most important thing is um, I just wanted to reply to you regarding the comments for Bohr and everybody else. I, I know this has been uh, really, really painful. So I don't know how much longer, but fingers crossed, hopefully not much longer. And I also wanted to take the opportunity while I'm responding to you here about the forums to get the first episode of the podcast, just the audio file only uploaded and live because again, I think I can't get this podcast 
listed in some of the popular directories until we have at least one episode uploaded. So killing two birds with one stone here. So that's pretty much it. And um, I'm going to talk about a little bit of a funny story. So if you're not interested in hearing that, feel free to tune out now. But otherwise, I've been a little bit sick the last week. Um, about 10 days ago, my wife and I we were traveling in, uh, to Vietnam. Uh, we were staying in a place there on the beach called Da Nang. Beautiful place. Really, really nice place. Great food. I went for a swim at the beach one day and I, I accidentally swallowed a little bit of the, the seawater and it wasn't the cleanest. And then I got a bit of a sore throat and I got sick. So I don't know if it was because of drinking the seawater or maybe I just got sick some other way. But I got pretty sick for a couple of days. And then since then, it's been about a week now, I've just had a bit of a lingering cough and I've been a bit congested and blocked up and I feel fine now, but um, still have a bit of a lingering cough. Anyway, the funny part of the story is yesterday I was, I was kind of daydreaming, wasn't really thinking properly while I was washing something in the kitchen sink. And here in Malaysia, where I live, you can't safely drink the tap water. Um, at least, yeah, you're not supposed to drink tap water. You're supposed to drink either filtered water, bottled water that you buy, or you can boil the water, I guess. Uh, so we have a filter. So we've got two taps at the sink. We've got the normal tap where the normal water comes out. You can use that for cleaning. That's fine. And we've got the filtered water on the left-hand side. Anyway, so I was washing, I think I was washing a coffee cup or something. And I, I just wasn't think. I wasn't paying attention. I was daydreaming while I was washing this thing, using the unfiltered, just the normal tap water. And I put the coffee cup on the rack to start drying. And then I filled up my drinking glass water. And I started drinking it. And I, I swallowed some. And immediately I thought, wow, this tastes different. What's, where did I get this water from? And I realized that I couldn't actually confirm. I didn't remember where, which tab I got the water from, whether it was the filtered water, the safe one, or the unfiltered water, which I shouldn't be drinking. And honestly, I don't know. I can't remember. I was daydreaming. So immediately I thought, oh, okay. Um, I'm just going to assume it was the bad water. So what should I do here? And I thought, all right, I think... Maybe the best thing I can do here, and I, I didn't go and check anything online about what you should do in that situation. I just sort of thought of this on the fly. I thought, okay, what I'm going to do here is just drink a lot of the filtered clean water and try and flush that bad water out. If I did indeed drink some of that bad water. So immediately I drank, you can see the size of this cup here. It's, um, I think it's like 350, 375 mils. Immediately filled up and just drank one after another, three glasses of, of water. And by the way, this is about lunchtime, maybe like one o'clock in the afternoon yesterday. By that time in the day, I had already consumed, I'd already drank so many glasses of water. I think by that point, I already drank about 10 glasses of water. So it was pretty crazy the amount of water that I drank in total by about one o'clock. And then before I started feeling sick, but you know, maybe like an hour later, I also made a, a giant smoothie, which was about one and a half liters as well. So in total, I think from about nine o'clock in the morning until about two o'clock in the afternoon, in those five hours, I think I drank probably about seven liters of fluid approximately, including you know, a bit of tea and coffee in the morning as well. So I drank an awful lot of fluid and it was probably the most water that I've ever drank in a single day in my life. And then I started feeling sick, you know, not surprisingly. And again, you know, right now I still don't actually know if I drank the bad water and that's what made me feel sick or if it was this just that I drank too much water and that's why I felt sick. I don't know, but I, I felt really, really bad. I felt terrible yesterday. I didn't vomit, but I did have nausea, headache, dizzy. Yeah, it was, it was not nice. I had no energy and I started researching the symptoms about, you know, what's going to happen to you if you drink bad water here in Southeast Asia. And what are the symptoms of drinking too much water? And it seems like the symptoms are actually quite similar. So I have no idea. You know, I had symptoms that are consistent with both drinking bad tap water and also consistent with drinking just way too much water in general. But whatever. Um, I did start to feel a little bit better last night before sleeping. I, I was able to eat some food and I uh, woke up this morning feeling fine. So that's the funny story. And I, I, I don't know, but I'm going to try and pay more attention in future. I'm going to try and be more present when I'm filling up my glass at the kitchen sink and make sure that I'm getting my water from the filtered water and not the dirty tap water. So that's my funny story that I wanted to share. 
Anyway, if you're still here, thanks for listening. If you are listening on podcast, um, please subscribe if you want to get future episodes of the Automated Home Podcast. We'll be dropping those over the coming one, uh, weeks and months. And if you're watching on YouTube, I would appreciate if you subscribed. Anyway, that's it for today. Have a lovely day and I'll talk to you again sometime soon.